Every networker needs to be able to look at an IP address and define the facts about the class A, B, or C network that address resides in, even this day and age. In this video, I'll give you some practice. This video has to do with the Official Cert Guide, Volume 1, Part 4, Chapter 12, the first section, and I've got a video that matches that for the content, and I've got a set of five problems here in this video and a different video with another set of five problems to just give you more practice if you want it. So note that there is a very similar video that you may have bumped into as well that's practice questions, but here are the practice questions for this video on the right. You can hit pause now and go ahead and answer. But what do I want you to do? What I show on the left here. Determine the class, and if the class is A, B, or C, find the four key facts about the network. The network ID, network broadcast address, the range of usable addresses, and the default mask for that network. Now you can go ahead and hit pause and work all five problems right now, and just write the answers on a piece of scratch paper, and then I'll tell you the answers. However, I'm gonna show you one sample real quick. It's the same sample I show in the other similar video. If your address is 8411, we know from the first octet value, that's in the range of first octet values for class A. So there's your class. We know class A networks, the network ID matches all the addresses in the first octet, but has zeros in the last three octets. We know that the network broadcast address matches all the addresses in the first octet only, but with 255s in the last three octets. So that's the network ID and network broadcast address. Then, from those numbers, you add one to the fourth octet to get the numerically lowest or first usable address, and you subtract one from the fourth octet of the network broadcast address, which is the highest number, but you can't use it, to get the last or highest usable address. So that's all for the calculations, and then from memory, for class A networks, you'd want to remember that the default mask is 255000 for class A networks. All right, now is indeed, if you haven't already, the time to hit pause and answer these five questions for the information on the left. And I'm going to show you the answers one after the other for the next few minutes. Here we go, problem one. First octet is 210. That's from the class C range of addresses, as you see there, so we'll treat it as such. What does that mean? The network ID's value is the same as the address in the first three octets. So there you go, the network ID, that's the first three octets, and then it's a zero in the fourth octet, the host octet. Similar logic for the network broadcast address, except we write a 255 instead of a zero in each host octet. That gets us our network ID and network broadcast address values. Then for the lowest and highest usable addresses in the network, because the network ID and network broadcast address are reserved and can't be used, we simply add one to the fourth octet of the network ID and subtract one from the fourth octet of the network broadcast address to find those values. So that's all the calculating. And then the default mask in a class C network from memory, three 255s, and a zero. Next up, notice the title. We've got this address, it begins with 110. 110 is in the range for class A networks. So here's a class A example. So knowing that, we know that the network ID's value matches the address's value in one octet only, the first octet on the left, 110, and the host octets are all zero in the network ID. So there you go, there's your network ID of 110.0.0.0. Similarly, the network broadcast address is formed, but it's with all 255s in the host part. So there's your network broadcast address. Based on those, you calculate the range of usable addresses simply by adding one to the fourth octet of the network ID and subtracting one from the fourth octet of the network broadcast address remembering that the network ID and network broadcast address are reserved and can't be used as an address on a device. Last bit from memory, default mask is 285.0.0.0. These should become automatic and second nature, but let's practice the last few here. 
The address begins with 160, putting it squarely in the class B range of addresses. So what does that mean for us? That means we've got two octets of network. So the address matches the network ID in the first two octets. But the network ID has zeros in the last two or host octets, as you see there. Similarly, the network broadcast address matches the addresses in the first two octets, the network octets, but has 255s in the two host octets. Can't use those, but the usable addresses are one bigger than the network ID all the way through one less than the network broadcast address. Then default mask from memory to 255.0.0. So problem four, we've got a 190 in the first octet, which kind of makes us wonder, is that class B or class C? And it turns out 190 is kind of just inside the class B range. So it's another class B example. So with class B, we've got two network octets. So the network ID matches the address in two octets with zeros in the last two octets. Then the network broadcast address follows a similar structure, except it's 255s in the host octets. There you go. In the range of addresses, we just add one to the network ID's fourth octet to get the first usable address subtract one from the broadcast address to get the last usable address, and those are the calculated values that matter in the network. And from memory, class B networks use that default mask. Last problem, let's see what we've got. Well, the address begins with 230, which is a legal number. It's between zero and 255, but notice it sits in the class D range. Those are multicast addresses, and those don't have network IDs and network broadcast addresses, so you don't have to calculate any of that stuff. So you're done once you figure out the class. Hope you enjoyed all the practice. That's an important skill, but a basic skill, so practice here and there to make sure you've got it. Subscribe and click the bell to be notified of other practice style of videos as well as content videos on CCNA. Hope you like the marriage of the content videos and the books as well. Let me know. Leave me a comment. Thanks a bunch. Talk to you later.